morning I woke up and uh, I had a sermon plan that I'll preach next weekend, okay? Next weekend I'll preach a sermon where essentially I'm preaching on four parables in one. We've been in a teaching series on the parables of Jesus and uh, we're 10 weeks deep in it and I spent around 25 to 30 hours this week prepping this sermon and I actually don't think this has happened in a while. I woke up this morning and I feel like the Lord was like, er, put the brakes on that. Uh, we're going to do something completely different today at Rev Church. And uh, again, that, that hasn't happened in probably, man, almost a year and a half, two years, somewhere in there. Uh, if you've been coming here for a while, then you know that's true. And so I just want to share something with you. Uh, we have two more baptisms during this service today. Isn't that awesome? And uh, yeah, it's pretty incredible. It's pretty incredible. Uh, we've baptized well over, this is all God, well over 100 people in the last two months. So it's just insane to see what God's doing. Um, our word for the year is revival. And uh, we're seeing that in people's lives. We're seeing that in marriages. We're seeing that in families. We're seeing that uh, in the church, I guess. And uh, it's, it's pretty awesome to see that. But uh, I've got a son who is in third grade. And the other day, on a whim, uh, his name is Titus. And the other day, on a whim, I thought, well, I need to read something in the Scripture. So I went to the book of Titus. It's a short book. That's why it's one of my favorite books. That's why I named my kid after it. Amen, y'all. And so, so if you're anything like me, it's like I'm not going to name him Leviticus. You know, I'm going to name him Titus. Yeah, three books. I can understand it, too. It's, it's pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, and in Titus chapter 3, something really stood out to me that I think somebody in here needs to hear. I want to spend just a little bit of time, just a couple of moments encouraging every single person in here, uh, if you'll allow me to. And then we're going to sing. I told the band, get a couple extra songs ready today uh, so we can praise God today and we can worship Him through singing. Does that sound good to you guys? Amen. And so, uh, so it's really, really good. But in Titus chapter 3... Uh, in verse 3, this is what it says. I think we even got it on the screen for you today. Uh, production team, I, I hit them up this morning and said, hey man, this is what I need. And I think they got it. So give them a big hand clap, y'all. They did a good job with that. <laughs> Titus chapter 3, this is what it says. And uh, just stood out to me. I started thinking about it last night. It says, at one time, we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. We lived in malice and envy. Malice means we wanted to hurt people intentionally. Envy really means we were jealous of what other people had and we envied them. We lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. Long story short, in those first couple of verses I just read, uh, we were miserable. We were miserable. I can remember before I met Jesus and before I put my trust in him, uh, if I'm being honest with you guys, I sought everything in the world to try to fulfill myself. I tried to lift myself up above others. I tried to lift my, my circumstances above others. I hated groups of people. I hated other people. I was envious of what they had and they had, and I was jealous and, and full of malice and full of sin. And, and, and man was miserable. Anybody been there? Raise your hand. Miserable. You've been miserable before. Raise your hand. Maybe you walked in this week and you're miserable if you're being honest. Hang on just a second because we got good news. Amen, Rev Church. Next couple of verses, this is what it says. But when the kindness and love of God, our Savior, appeared, He saved us, not because of righteous things we had done, but... Because of his, what does that word say, y'all? Mercy. Mercy, mercy. That's what my grandma used to say. Mercy, you know? Mercy. Because of his mercy. In spite of us, in spite of who we are, in spite of what we've done, in spite of all those things that made you miserable and all those things you did, God sent his son Jesus and sent mercy to this earth. And that is good news. That is good news. See, the reality in here today is, is pretty simple. 
Uh, you know, I, I say this almost every week, but we got a saying printed on the door, and we say it on the radio, and we put it on all our print ads and everything, but it is, help me, church, no perfect people allowed. Let's say that one more time and get woke up during this fall weather. This is the first fall Sunday of the year, and y'all got to get woke up, okay? So let's say it again. One, two, three. No perfect people allowed. Look at your neighbor and say, he's talking about you. You ain't perfect. Go ahead. Like... Now find somebody else around you that you probably don't know and say, he's definitely talking about you. Because you're definitely not perfect. In spite of that, in spite of that, in spite of the fact that we're all broken, God has mercy on us. I was uh, flying last year to a conference uh, in uh, Orlando is where it was. It was this year, actually. I think it was in February or March. And uh, I was on the plane, and right before we got ready to land, uh, the person on the intercom came over, and this stood out to me in my mind. They said, uh, we're getting ready to land here in about five or ten minutes. You know the whole spiel, but this is the thing that stood out. If you have any unwanted garbage, the stewardess is coming down the aisle so you can throw it away now. And I started thinking to myself, Unwanted garbage. Huh. Who wants garbage? Don't we call those like hoarders and we do TV shows about them? You know what I'm saying? Like garbage in and of itself is something that no one wants. It's something that's disgusting. It's something that has been used up. It's something that you don't want to touch. It's something that smells. It's a unwanted garbage like everybody sitting on the plane going no you can't take this wrapper it's mine this old gum that I've been chewing the whole time it's mine I got to put it in my collection again something's wrong with you if you want garbage I got to thinking about that and then I got to thinking about this scripture it just popped in my head this morning isn't that what we were isn't that what we were? I mean, I, I hate to break this to you. I know y'all been told you're awesome and you're great. and You can do anything and you're the greatest thing in the world and you're awesome. But the reality is what this scripture says. You are a broken mess, a.k.a. you are garbage, okay? Garbage. I mean, really. But Jesus in his mercy said, I love them. I'm going to die for them. <laughs> I'm going to come to the earth and become a curse for them in spite of the fact that they're unwanted, in spite of the fact that they're broken, in spite of the fact that they're so smelly, in spite of the fact that they're so messed up, in spite of the fact that they're chewed up and used up and nobody wants them, I want them. I'm going to die for them. I'm going to be there for them. The scripture continues, and here's the ultimate promise. Y'all still with me? Say, I am. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having been, we talked about this a couple weeks ago, right, justified by his grace, thank God it's not by our works, thank God it's not by the great things we do, thank goodness it's not because we serve at the mission or we go to church or we don't cuss or we don't drink or we don't dip or what am I going to say next? We don't date girls that do, right? And so, thank goodness it's not based off that stuff. We're justified by His grace. And listen to this. We might become heirs having the hope of eternal life. Man, I don't know what it is you're going through this week, Rev Church. I don't know what your struggle is in your life. I don't know what the season of life you're in is. I don't know what's happening with you. I don't know if you're in mourning. I don't know if you're, if you're struggling with an addiction. I don't know if you have a kid that's struggling with an addiction. I don't know if you got laid off this week. I don't know if your marriage is on the rocks. I don't know what is going on in here. I don't know if you're a female in here and, and you can't have a baby and that haunts you and that torments you and the enemy just beats you up over that. But I know this. I know this. Hear this. We have a promise we have a promise 
Even though we're on this side of heaven, even though we're in this world, even though our bodies are broken, even though our society is broken, even though everything around us can seem jacked up and can seem so confusing, we have a promise one day and a hope of eternal life. It's the promise of heaven. Amen, Rev Church. Have you guys heard about heaven Anybody heard about heaven before? Have you sought through the scriptures and actually seen what the Bible has to say about heaven? See, this totally changes our perspective on life here on earth. The book of Thessalonians says, don't mourn like people that have no hope. Don't walk around like an atheist going, well, when we die, that's all there is. Or, or some other crazy religion, well, I don't know if grandma became a slug or if she became another person. I have no idea because of reincarnation. No, we mourn like people with hope, full of joy because of this place called heaven. Amen, Rev Church. Let me just encourage you just for a moment with a couple of scriptures. Colossians chapter 3 says, Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on, say those next two words with me, Rev Church, things above where Christ is seated, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on, say those next two words with me, Rev Church, things above, not earthly things for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God when Christ who is your life appears then you also will appear with him and say that last word with me in glory in heaven man we need to be encouraged this weekend Rev Church amen if the only thing Jesus ever did for us was save us and when we died allowed us to be able to be a part of heaven, that is way more than any of us will ever need. Amen? If he never does anything for you on this life and you have the hardest life ever while you're on this earth, in the next life, you get to be a part of glory. You get to be a part of something that is unimaginable. Listen to 1 Peter chapter 1. We have a priceless inheritance an inheritance that is kept in, say that word with me, Rev Church, heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. But our citizenship is in what, Rev Church? Mm, thank goodness, man. Thank goodness our citizenship is not a part of all nation. Amen. Thank goodness our citizenship is not being a part of, of Crossville, Tennessee or, or the United States of America. Have you looked around lately? It's kind of crazy. I love where we live. I love the United States of America. But nobody can figure anything out because this world is so broken. Our citizenship is in heaven. And from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body by the power that enables him to even subject all things to himself. Revelation chapter 5 tells us that one day, you and I, the people that have put their trust in Jesus, we are going to sing a new song. And it's no longer going to be posts on Facebook about how everything's falling apart. And it's no longer going to be drama that's happening at your work. And it's no longer going to be about gossip about the things that are going on in the church and negativity. We will sing a new song. And we get a picture of this in Revelation 21 when it tells us that Jesus will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death. There will be no more mourning. There will be no more crying, no more pain for the old order of things has passed away. This broken world is gone. It's no more when we get to this place. Do we get that, Rev Church? Amen? Man, we better get excited today because when we sing in a minute, hey, when we sing in a minute, it's us praising Jesus for this promise. It's us praising Jesus that 
one day we are going to be in a place where you don't have to go to the doctor anymore. You're going to go to a place where there is no sickness anymore. You're going to go to a place where you're not going to get a bill that says three months overdue anymore. It's already been paid in full by Jesus. You're going to go to a place, hey, kids in here and teenagers and and college kids in here, listen, no more exams and tests. Praise Jesus. Like, no more of my man right here freaking out. No more trying to learn new knowledge because you will be glorified. We're going to be in a place where there is no more funeral homes. There is no more hospitals. There is no more emergency room visits. There is no more divorce courts. There is no more custody battles that will take place. Amen? There's no more bankruptcy. There's there's no more suicide. There's no more addiction. There's no more terrorism. There's no more prejudice. There's no more misunderstandings. There's no more unforgiveness. There's no more gossip. There's no more hate. I'm going to tell you all something. This will blow your mind if you wrap your mind around it. In heaven, they're not going to have a special place for the Fairfield people and the Crossville people and keep them separated. Amen? Amen? We're all going to be standing together in unity saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Worthy is, but I'm just going to tell you, like if you hate church, if you can't stand singing, you're going to hate heaven, bro. Because we're going to be in the biggest church service ever, singing to the King, singing to Jesus. No more wheelchairs, no more depression, no more child abuse, no more heart attacks, no more cancer, no more suffering, no more separation, no more starvation, no more division. No, I got to throw this in there. Maybe this will get the biggest reaction of all. No more Alabama football. I got to get y'all back. I got to get y'all back. I want you to listen to what C.S. Lewis said. He's the guy that wrote the Chronicles of Narnia. Y'all still with me? Say, I am. am. We getting you there yet? Say, yeah, buddy. Okay, let's just give a big Ric Flair. Woo, on the cow three. One, two, three. Here we are. C.S. Lewis said this. If you read history, you will find that the Christians who did the most for the present world were just those who thought the most of the next world. Everybody close your eyes because we're going to pray in a minute. And while you close your eyes, I want you to think about something. I want you to imagine, if you can, I understand the Bible says no eye has seen, no ear has heard. We cannot comprehend at all what it will be like one day with this promise that Jesus has given us. But I want you to think about it. Maybe you need to consider your circumstances, your brokenness, how messed up everything is. And allow God to flip a switch for you to have eyes toward the sky. To have eyes on things above. What's it going to be like when we get there? Who's going to greet you when you get there? Who are you going to greet when they get there and you've already been there for a while? No eye has seen, no ear has heard, nor the heart of man imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. You can't even imagine it. In your wildest dreams right now in this moment, you can't even imagine the hope that we have, the security that we have. Hope of eternal life. I said this once when I preached a sermon about a year and a half ago about heaven. I'm going to say it again right now. There are going to be two things that are going to surprise us when we get to heaven. I really believe this. I may have heard this from a preacher or read it in a book. I don't remember who from, though. This is what's going to surprise us. Who's there? And who's not there? I believe there may be people here this weekend at Rev Church that you're not sure. You're not.
not sure. Like you go to church, you play the whole church thing in Crossville, Tennessee. You know, you, you do the best you can to be good and, and follow moralism and try to do some good stuff here and there and be a good citizen and all that good stuff. But when it comes to having a relationship with the one who gives us this promise, when it comes to knowing that you know that you know that you know Jesus, so you have a hope for eternity. When it comes to changing your perspective here on earth because you know where you're going when you're no longer on this earth, you're not sure about that. You're questioning that. If you're here this weekend or you're watching online and you don't know Jesus, I'm gonna lead a prayer. And in this moment, it's not about the words. It's not about you saying them out loud. We'll we'll have a time where you can go public with your faith. That's baptism. You'll see two people in this service do that today. But in this moment, it's about commitment, surrender, and trust in Jesus. It's about giving everything to him. We've been using this word surrender a lot lately. A lot. So if you're here this weekend and And you need to surrender everything to him, to Jesus. Just say this prayer and mean this prayer. And you can say it out loud. You can say it in your mind, but mean it. That's the more important thing. Lord, there are people in here that are broken messes. And right now they need to call on you and surrender everything to you. Lord, I pray that these people, that you would speak to them and they wouldn't have brick walls around their hearts, that they would have ears to hear what it is you're trying to tell them. And right now, they would pray with me, Lord, I am a broken mess. I can't get it straight. I've tried, but I am am full of, of misery. I'm so broken. I'm so messed up. Right now, I know that in spite of the things I've done wrong, in spite of the balls that I've dropped, in spite of of all my brokenness, right now, you're willing to have mercy on me and extend grace for me. So right now, Lord, I put my trust in Jesus. I believe that he died for me. I believe that he became a curse for me so that I no longer have to suffer in misery. Now I have the hope for eternity. Right now I surrender everything to him. I give everything to you, Jesus. If you would, would you save me? I need you. Nobody looking around. get kind of old school with this, aren't we, y'all? Everybody good? Say, yep. Yep. I recognize that in this room this week with this many people, there could be people in here that uh, know Jesus, but you're struggling. You need a reminder. You need encouragement. You need Titus 3 just to remember what he saved you from. You need Titus 3 to remember the hope for eternity that you have. You've had a bad week. You've had a bad month. You've had a bad year. You've had a bad life, whatever. And you just need to remember this weekend that Jesus is with you through everything. He's there. He's there. He's there. He's with you. He's there. He's not leaving. He's there. When you go through a divorce, he's there. When you mess up, he's there. When you get fired, he's there. When your kid loses their mind, he's there. He is always there if you put your trust in him. Amen, Rev Church. We are so glad that you've joined us online today and checked out Revolution Church. You can find us on Facebook and actually go like our page if you want to keep up with the church. Or you can join our text club, text Rev Church to 62582. If you have questions, if you'd like to talk to someone, if you have prayer requests, just email us at office 
at crossvillerevolution.com or you can call our church at 931-248-6441. Thank you so much.